Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel and today I'm going to show you guys how to make your own head tracker. I get asked all the time what do I use to do my head tracking, how do I get the smooth camera motions, how do I turn my head the way I do in the, in the plane and whatnot. And today I'm going to show you guys how to build one. I know Track IR is fairly expensive right now and we're all suffering from the same thing. Money's pretty tight and Track IR thing is $149.99. I'm going to show you guys what I hope is a cheaper solution. Now, unfortunately, the PS3 i camera used to be about 6 or $7 on Amazon and right now it's about 38 So it's gone up and I'm sure this is part of why. There are some other solutions and I'm going to show you guys those. So jumping into it, there's two different types of headsets we can make. One with a USB cable and one that can be just using or made just using a battery pack. The battery pack requires a little bit more work. There will be a separate video for this one that you're seeing right now. Today we're going to do the series build using a USB cable. Now some tools that you're going to need right off the bat, you're going to need a sacrificial USB cable, old phone charger, a USB extension cable, doesn't matter. Uh, we're just going to clip the end off one end of it and then um, you know piece it together as you see here. And what we're going to be doing is what's called a series. And a series basically means that we only have a total of two lengths going through the channel that you can see there on the bottom there. So we're going to need our frame that you can see right there on the bottom picture. We're going to need some LEDs, a USB battery pack if you want this thing to be completely uh, portable so you can put it in your pocket whatever I don't recommend building it in a way where you would put this on the side of your head um, think about this the weight of your headset then the weight of the frame the weight of the wiring and then add a battery pack to it you're gonna have a lot of weird weight on one side of your head and it's gonna get uncomfortable and you can really give yourself a really bad headache or some neck pain we're also going to need some resistors um, and a link for every single thing that I'm using in the video will be down in the description below. You're going to want some heat shrink. You're going to want a soldering iron. You don't necessarily have to go out and buy an expensive one. If you don't have one, see if a friend's got one, you know, uh, anybody who you know. You don't have to be a pro. I suck at it. You, the, you guys who are good with soldering irons are going to laugh. But before we get into the giggling, let's talk about what we're going to be doing here. So again, this is assuming that you guys have purchased everything that is down in the description below. You did not deviate at all, okay? That's really important for this next part. If you did so, then the LEDs that you have will have two legs on them. The longer leg is the positive, the shorter leg is the negative. This is important for what we're gonna do here. We're gonna be doing what's called a series, okay? So we have our sacrificial USB cable, which we're gonna keep the USB end, we're gonna cut whatever other end is off. Okay, this end would plug into your computer or your battery pack. You have a positive and a negative lead, which we'll go over later in the construction of the USB cable. There's a little bit more to it than that that we'll have to do, but you guys will get the gist. So we're going to take the positive lead from our number one. I've numbered them. So we have LEDs one, two, and three being on the long leg, one being on the shortest. Well, sort of the shortest. This one's in the middle, but you guys get the gist. So we're going to take positive on number one and take it all the way down to the USB cable. Negative on number one is going to go to positive on two. Negative on two is going to go to positive on three. And negative on three is going to go to the USB. Now, the other thing that I missed in my little fancy drawing here is we're also going to put the resistor right in here on this negative lead. Now, hindsight being 2020, you guys are about to see that I actually wish that I had put it on the positive side, and I'll show you why. Now, with that being said, when it comes to the resistor, it does not matter where you put it. You can put it anywhere you want, as long as it is between the LEDs and the USB cable, it doesn't matter. Um, you only need one for the series that we're gonna be doing, but that's just to make sure that you don't get too much voltage into the LEDs, which will obviously extend their life, okay? And then again, here's a written diagram of where everything should go. So Here's LED number one, here's LED number two and three. They're positive and negative leaves and where they go. So again, two positive goes to one negative, two negative goes to three positive, et cetera, just like we just talked about. Okay, so that's pretty much it for what we're gonna be doing today. Now, the one thing I wanna give you guys a heads up on is, unfortunately, in the first part of this, I thought I was recording and apparently I wasn't. So I need to catch you guys up real quick on what's already done at the time this video starts. And you guys are going to see a demonstration or a video of it, but I want to explain it. What I've done so far is taken the number one lead. I sort of cut the leg back a little bit to sort of shape it to the frame, right? And that's what we're going to call this. We're just going to call this the frame. Okay, so shaped it to the frame. Cut the wire so that way it's very, very long. I don't care how long it is because it's going out of the frame and into the USB. But put some heat shrink on it. Okay, obviously didn't heat it yet. Soldered it, my, made my solder connection from the or wire onto the positive LED lead and then brought the heat shrink up to cover the uh, connection. We don't want any bare metal. Okay, heated it with a heat gun and now that's what we're at so far. Okay, so as you guys see the video start, I wanted you guys to make sure that you have that information so you were nice and caught up. Okay.
We're going to explain things as I go, but there's going to be many parts of the video that I'm going to accelerate. Otherwise, this video would be astronomically long, and I don't think that you guys would want to sit through that. All right, so real quick, before I start accelerating, you can see right there on the right side, just next to my hand, here's the cable that I was telling you about. Here's some of the work that had already been done. So just everything that we just talked about previously. So now we're going to start hooking up the next part of the cable. Now I'm going to speed this part up, guys, and let you guys just sort of see how I do it. Um, the biggest things I'm going to give you guys tips on is um, the helping hands that you guys see there, that metal clamp that was holding that piece, that LED. Those are like 6 or $7. They're really handy. Uh, you can get them at Ace Hardware. Um, but don't don't feel like you have to. If you got to wing it, wing it. You know, um, I do recommend soldering. Again, please keep in mind, I am not good at this. This is probably my fifth or sixth time ever using a soldering iron. Um, it's... I treated it like a welder, ran it super hot, just pumped a bunch of solder onto it, and it seemed to work out. So, like I said, you guys who are pros with a soldering iron, you're going to look at this and be like, my dear Lord, how did you even, you know, tie your shoes this morning? Um, but anyway, so you guys can sort of see what I'm going to be doing here. Again, if there's any doubts on what I'm doing, just refer back to the start of this where that document or where that image was, and you guys will see how I'm putting it all together. But from here on out, I'm just sort of accelerate time here. The biggest thing that I can tell you guys to remember as you're going through this is um, to be sure that uh, you don't forget about your heat shrink. Don't forget about both ends of the heat shrink. When you start closing the circuit, you really do want heat shrink. You can use um electrical wire but i recommend or electrical tape but i recommend against it. electrical tape doesn't hold very well um and then watch for those little tails that you guys just see that i did with the solder that's another thing to watch for um you can just if you create those just smooth it out with your soldering iron you'll be fine um also you can see there for a quick second i did use my finger to balance the wire you do what you got to do but don't forget yes it absolutely gets hot okay the heat travels through the wire and yeah it burns your finger doesn't give you like blisters or anything like that but yeah it, it doesn't feel great <laughs> but again you guys just do what you gotta do so i'm gonna let you guys just sort of see what i do in slow motion here or normal speed here what i'm doing with the heat shrink putting it on the back end um the biggest thing is whenever you put your heat shrink on you know plan ahead um because if you get it too close to when you're soldering the wires you'll activate the heat shrink and it'll be stuck to wherever you left it um, so be cautious with the heat shrink. It, I absolutely recommend it. You don't want any bare metal when you're done. You don't want any bare wires. You don't want to risk anything ever falling apart or shorting out. Um, and it just, it's, it's nice. It gives you a little bit more reinforcement to your, to your project here. Um, <clears throat> trying to think of the tips as, as I was going on here. Um, take your time planning everything out, measure it, measure it again, measure it again after that. Um, it's really not hard. It's tedious work, but it's not hard. Um, if you don't have a heat gun, you can use a cigarette lighter. You can use a hair dryer. If you are using open flame, just, I mean, you know what fire does. Be careful. Don't get too close. Um, it does take the heat shrink a quick second before it starts to activate, but you'll watch it start shrinking down. It happens really quick once it does it. Okay. So from here, I'm just going to speed up the video guys. And if I catch any key points, I'll speak up, but I want you guys to sort of see how I make it all build out. All right. So again, just taking time, making sure to properly form things. So we're working on the second LED. So again, like I was saying before, you know, plan ahead, get your heat shrink on first. I know that I was going to be bending that node around. So there wasn't going to be wire directly connecting to it. And I wanted to keep it covered. Sometimes you have to sort of fiddle with the heat shrink, um, sort of coerce it around corners, if you will, but it works. Just be gentle with it. And that's the biggest thing is be gentle with all this stuff. You know, you can, you can absolutely break the legs off these. So be careful. And so in this one, we're going to be taking the positive from two and connecting it to the negative on one. I'm trimming them down. There's more of the heat shrink. And again, I left just enough of the leg out where we uh, can attach the wire to it. Make sure when you're cutting your wire, you make sure you plan for the overlap. Don't cut it tip to tip. You need to make sure that the wires are going to overlap your connections. Otherwise, you got nothing to solder to.
Now here what I've done is I put a piece of heat shrink on both sides, just in case. Again, like I said, if that solder gets too close, you won't be able to move it. And so that's sort of what happened there in my on your left, is the heat shrink on the left got activated by the soldering iron. So that's why I put one on each side, just in case. Plan ahead. So now that connection's complete, we're moving on. So now we're going for the positive on three, going to the negative on two. Shaping it, fitting it, figuring out how I want to do it. And again, double checked those wires to make sure they'd overlap. Shaped the legs on my LEDs first. Now this one you notice I didn't put the heat shrink on yet on the wire because I still have the open end. There's our heat shrink coming all the way over. Setting up for the next piece. Plan ahead. Because I can't tell you how many times that I have closed a circuit and forgotten the heat shrink. Sometimes you can pre-solder the wires. It makes it a little bit easier to bond them together when it comes time later. Again, sometimes you got to use your fingertips to hold the wires together. Or a pair of pliers if you don't want to be a fool like me and burn yourself. But, uh... The biggest thing is just patience, guys, and, and double and triple check yourselves. Now here is where we bring the resistor into play here. So I'm going to trim that way down. First I attach the one end onto the lead, because I'm going to put the resistor down that long end of the channel. Now the other thing to know about the resistors is they do not actually fit in the channel. Okay, so this is why I was saying earlier that I, hindsight being 2020, I wish that I had actually put the resistor on the positive lead. On the same on the same line, I just wish I had done it on the positive versus the negative, because that way it would have sat on top of the wiring. But you'll see later, it worked out just fine, because we're going to use some very large heat shrink to cover all the wiring up when we're all done. Hold everything in place. And it makes it look pretty slick for a homemade. So... Next, again, with the resistor, it's probably the most critical piece where you really have to make sure your measurements are right. So I'm laying, I know that stupid uh, helping hand thing is in the way, but I'm laying everything in. That way I know exactly how it's going to lay because you want to get just as close to perfection as possible when it comes time to put the resistor in. So I'm really getting a really close idea of it and then laying the resistor on top. And just like with any other pieces, you want to cut it short, but you want to make sure that your wires have enough uh, wiring to overlap. So I'm not cutting tip to tip. I'm making sure that the wires are overlapping. That way I have something to work with. So the wire that I cut out, it was really just the width of the blue part of the resistor. And you guys will see what it all looks like here in a second when it's all together. And I know I've said it already, guys, but I'm going to keep saying, keep stressing, as you can tell here, again, those of you who know what you're doing with a soldering iron, I'm not a pro, not by any freaking means. You don't have to be. We're, we're not building an engine here. We're not building a spaceship. Very low voltage running through it. You know, we're not, or low amperage. We're not worrying about electrocuting anybody. Now 
And sometimes they'll fight you, and this is where, you know, you just got to get creative. And the cool thing about the solder is you'll actually watch it. You know, it, you can see it turn from liquid to solid really easily. So you'll know when it catches. Sometimes you can blow on it a little bit, you know, after you've made the connection just to help it uh, cure faster. But so here's what I was talking about earlier, and this is why I wish I had done it on the positive lead. You can notice that the negative lead actually lays on top of the positive wire, but, um, or lays under, excuse me, but the resistor won't fit in the channel, so you have to be able to take it down, you know, above it. But now we're into cleanup, and I'll show you guys why it wasn't an issue. So we take a very large piece of heat shrink, sort of mash it around in your fingers a little bit just to sort of make it malleable. Um, and then just sort of shove it over your connections. Now you want to be real careful. Don't drag it on the wire side. Make sure you're holding the frame. Um, that way you don't pull any connections apart. Then just take your heat gun to it a few times or again, open flame, hair dryer, whatever you're using. Okay, we're going to do the same thing for all three side, or, uh, all three ends. We don't want any wires hanging out. Well, as little as possible. Some of it you can't avoid. Just the nature of the way the, the frame is. Just grabbing a little one for that last piece. We're just taking one more little piece, sort of catch that corner. Again, you can overlap them very easily. And it still looks nice. still looks clean. You just don't want anything to be able to catch anything, right? You don't want anything. And there we go. All right, so now it's time to move on to our sacrificial USB cable. Okay, so we've got our head dragger built, so now we're going to set that aside and take our USB. Now, make sure you don't clip the wrong end. Yes, scare it, intimidate it, it's worth it. Oh no, boss, I'm sorry, oh gosh, it'll fight you for a minute, but you know, we win in the end. Um, so next thing we need to do is find a creative way to strip the shielding off. Now, I do not recommend the, recommend the particular method that I picked as I'm using a razor blade. Hopefully you guys come up with something better, but in most USB cables, and this one, for example, has four wires in it, plus a silver wire that's bunched up around it. The silver wire that's bunched up around the four wires is part of the ground, um, but you don't need it. It's not required for this. However, a lot of USB cables, what you'll find is a white, white wire, a red wire, a green wire, um, and then that silver wrapping that I'm showing you there. Okay, the silver wire, um, again, is the ground. Um, the green and white wire are data wires. You can clip those. You don't need them. If you do have four wires, if you have red, black, green, and white, then all you need is the red and black. Okay. If you don't have the red and black and you only have red, then save the metal wiring that's exposed. You'll be, and if that's the case, just take the mesh, the, the fibrous stuff, uh, looks like almost like string and cut it away. So that way all you have left is the silver metal and the red wire. Okay, that way you got your ground and your positive. So in our case here, we already had a black and a red wire on both the USB cable and on the um, uh, head tracker, obviously. Now, the other thing to remember, obviously, keep things clean. So I'm putting a large piece of heat shrink on here just to sort of bind the wires together, put it all the way up to the base of the frame, just to sort of keep things nice and tidy and keep things from being able to move around too much. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So again, just keep, don't just think about construction, think about quality and keeping things nice and clean. That's really important. Again, you don't want these wires getting caught on something, your hand, etc., and you tearing them out and losing all your work. So, you know, keep that in mind. All right. But uh, as here, we're just going to prep it the same way we did any other wire. Make sure that you have access to heat shrink. Now, one thing that I forgot to do that I'm going to tell you guys is on the USB cable itself, put a large piece of heat shrink on there. That way where that very bottom part is that you guys can see there where it sort of 
where the red and black wire meet the shielding, you guys can cover that part up. That way it looks nice and clean. I forgot to do that. I'm going to have to probably use electrical tape because I don't feel like separating again. Um, so do that, you know, just to sort of save you guys a little bit of effort there and make things look a lot nicer. But from here, like I said, it's just uh, the same that you've been doing so far. If you've gotten this far, this is the easy part. So once you got those two points connected, again, just pull your heat shrink over, clean it up. And by the way, that heat gun, I think that was another like 10 or 15 bucks at Ace Hardware. It wasn't bad. Um, so if you guys don't want to use a hair dryer or something like that, they're not particularly expensive. Uh, you don't need, an, if, you, if you're like me and things like this, the only time you're going to be using it, don't buy something that's super expensive. It's not worth it. All right, so our last step here is we're just going to plug it into the USB. Now, obviously, you guys won't be able to do this part just yet, but I'm just showing you guys that the completion of our project. I already have a camera set up. Obviously, I've been using it for a while, so the software is already installed. So now I've just plugged this in as we built it. And what you're going to be looking for on the screen there is just three dots. And um, there you guys go. Three LEDs indicates that we're ready to rock. So let's go ahead and get into the software portion of things now as far as uh, setting up for the track IR configuration. All right, guys, so now we're done with the hardware portion. We've got our camera set up. We've got our filters in place. We Now we have the, um, the software to work with. So the first thing that you're going to need is you're going to need to come here to this website. It's uh, Code Laboratories. You need to pick up their download uh, or their CLI driver. Now this does is does is this is a purchased um, application, but I believe it's uh, let's see here. What does this say here? It's not expensive. Uh, let's see here. Uh, what was it? Download now. Yep, two ninety nine. Okay, so two ninety nine U.S. dollars. Um, nothing too crazy. And then it gives you access to the iDriver. <clears throat> okay. Then you want to come here to this website, swordforge.net, and then grab the OpenTrack 2312 um, software. And just the Win32 is fine. Okay. Now, once we have these, you'll install the drivers. Install the drivers first. I'm not going to walk you guys through that. It's pretty self explanatory. Unzip the driver, it's got an executable. Install it. Same thing with the open track, install it, and you will have an app that looks like this. Now, this app looks pretty old. Um, it's not, you know, very clean, etc., but it works very well. So, the first thing we're going to do, you got your head uh, tracker on, you know, you got it plugged in, etc., and now we're going to go ahead and hit start. Now, you can see right away, everything's really bright. You can see me in the background, so you're going to have to adjust that. Um, and it's picking up some artifacts at times. Okay, those other little dots and markers, those are artifacts, other IR sources. I've got a window open behind me, etc. So we want to go ahead and try to clean some of this up. And you can see that there. Okay, it's really getting bad up there. So let's go ahead and go to the options here. We're going to click on the hammer next to input. And here's all of our camera information. Now, for FPS, I put it at 120 hertz. It normally caps out at about 75 hertz, so if you want, you can do that instead. We can just do 75 if you want. That works. And then we're going to go ahead and go open again. If you're on the red setting on your zoom, if you look at the camera itself, it's got a red and a blue dot. The blue dot is a wide field of view. You're going to want that, I believe, at 75 degrees. If you're on the red dot, you want it at 54, which is what I use. All right. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to come down here to open and we need to adjust some of the gain properties to get rid of some of these artifacts. So what we're going to do is uncheck auto on gain, uncheck auto on the exposure, uncheck auto on the color, bring your colors all the way up. OK, 
Okay, and then what we're gonna do is pull the gain down until all we see are the LEDs. And not necessarily all we see, like you can see, it can still see me back there, but I find that works okay. But the reason why I leave it like that is I still get much more movement. I mean, as you can see, I can, I'm turning my head literally to the limits, okay? Um, and that's what I like. You can adjust this to your own preference, obviously your own ambient settings, what your lighting conditions are is gonna be different than mine. Um, it gets pretty bright in here because, you know, I live in Arizona, so um, sun, sun, and more sun. Um, but anyway, I leave the exposure up, leave the gain up, and this is pretty much how I run it from here on out. Okay, so now I'm gonna hit apply and okay. I'm done with that portion. Next thing we're gonna do is go over to model. Now, if you are using the same template that I linked in the description below, these are the settings. You're gonna go for 40, 30, 74, and 70. Okay, once you've got that done, you wanna hit start calibration. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna stare straight at the screen. I'm gonna hit start calibrate. And I'm just gonna rotate my head. We're not moving side to side. We're keeping our head and keep your head on, on a on a spike, if you will. Don't let your head move around. But you're gonna rotate it. So I'm looking down, going up, sort of like you're relaxing your neck. You know, you're stretching your neck out, you roll your head, then going from left to right, but I'm not physically moving my body. I'm just turning my head. Okay, once that's done, hit stop calibration, and it should give you some decent measurements and makes the smoothing or the head tracking much more effective. All right? So with that done, we're not gonna worry about the cap. We don't have a cap clip, custom. These are custom measurements if you had something different. So we're just gonna leave it at clip. And now we're just gonna hit okay. And we're done there. So now we're ready to jump into the sim. Oh, there was one more setting. Correction, correction. Let's click on the hammer again here. This guy right here. now. Some videos will tell you to leave it on auto. Some will tell you to adjust it yourself. Every time I try to adjust it myself, it goes bad. I just, I can't really get a good, a good arc on it. So what I'm referring to is if you click this, watch the circles around the LEDs as I move the slider. Okay, it defines the LED point. You go down too far and it becomes one big blob of, of mess. Come, keep coming back further and you start picking up artifacts and, and blurry lights and everything like that. So. I'm gonna go forward. Sort of put it right there. And you can see that I lose it. But let's see if I can bring it back. I'm pulling it back, pulling it back. Right about there. But then I lose it again. So I'm gonna click back on it. And this is really hard to do while you're turning your head. There we go. Right about there. And I maintain. Oh, no, lost it again. Right there, I lost it. Now, the other thing is, I have to stress to you guys, I am turning my head as far as it can go. Like, so you're probably not going to be cranking your head that far over. But we can bring the slider back a little bit more. Check that up and down axis. And all is good. Okay? So, <laughs> surprisingly, as I'm sitting here saying that that never works for me, it actually turned out okay. Um, but if you find yourself having a lot of trouble, I actually find that the automatic threshold works pretty well. Um, so if you run into that position where you're just fighting and fighting it, try the automatic, see if it works. You know, it goes back to that golden that golden phrase that we all use and teach our children. If it's not broke, don't fix it, right? If it's working just fine, leave it alone. You know, so I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. We'll leave it as is. And now let's go ahead and check things out in the sim. And I'm going to show you guys how to sort of customize it and tweak it to your liking, okay? All right, guys, so here we are in the simulator. Forgive if the recording gets a little weird, guys. Um, I'm using Shadowplay. OBS was giving me a hard time, and I didn't want you guys to wait any longer, and I didn't want to fight with OBS. Um, so anyway, I just want to get this video out for you guys. So after we're in the sim, we've got our software up, we've done some basic configuration, now it's time, time to make it comfortable for us, right? So before we notice my headset's turned off right now, I'm using my battery powered one for this, but the principles are the exact same, so it doesn't matter. Um, but we're gonna go to options. And the first thing I want you guys to do is set your shortcuts, all right? So you want a center, a toggle. Um, these are the two primary. You guys can mess with these at your will. Um, and then again, you can bind actually up to three different keys um, to select which bind, um, or excuse me, two different keys. Sorry, forgive me. Um, so with this bind, changes the key command over here. This bind changes the key command over here. Okay. 
Um, but uh, anyway, set yourself up with a you know key command for at least center and toggle. Because um, if it gets any kind of if you lose any kind of tracking, um, you know for example uh, another infrared source catches the camera or anything like that, it'll screw your camera position up. So you want to be able to rapidly reset it. Um, if you're using a HOTAS joystick, etc., I suggest mapping it to one of those as well. That way, again, quick access. But anyway, so next we're going to go over to output. I recommend when we first set this first part up, disable everything but roll or uh, pitch and yaw. And I'll explain why in a second. We're going to turn these back on, but we're going to work on the primary directions first. You're up, down, and you're left and right. And then we'll work on everything else. Because, for example, X, Y... Okay, those are you literally moving your head from side to side, like scooting yourself over to the passenger seat in this instance. So we don't want those yet. We just want turning left, turning right, up and down. All right, and then we're not going to worry about relative translation and game detection is up to you. Um, this will start a profile that's executed based on um, what game is launched, right? But I only use the default profile. I don't create a bunch of profiles. You can. So if we cancel here for a second, the one thing you do need to do is stop, and then you can change it from here. Okay, you can um, save as a new profile, so you can come here, create new empty config, um, create new copied config, so I would do that here, and then, um, you know, you can set up for a specific aircraft. Oh, let me bring that back. So, but I just use the default. Typically, I use one, one configuration that works with everything. All right, so, oh, I keep doing that. I don't want to click another game. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and turn my tracker on. Boom. All right, so you can see everything's kind of crazy. So we're going to go Alt-C. And you want to center your head first. I know, like, this is me right now staring at the center of my monitor. And then boom. Now you can see we're still sort of kicked off in a weird direction. All right, so that's probably more accurate. But anyway, now we're going to smooth this out. Because this is, I mean, watch the relative movement compared to what we're actually doing that's that's fast and you probably don't want that fast if you like it that fast that's that's awesome um but again we're, we're going to show you guys how to sort of make this a bit more comfortable here and i'm going to go alt c again okay and you always want to test it before you start messing with the config make sure you can actually look down watch your tracking and sometimes you may physically if you watch the dots you may physically have to actually rotate them up a little bit to give yourself more head movement okay all right so here we go now let's start messing with our with our settings here and actually what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and disable the pitch too for right now we're just going to start with one so now all i've got is left and right to work with so i'm going to hit okay i'm going to click on mappings here now you have asymmetric mapping which means that you can change the behavior from one direction to the other. Or if you uncheck this, whatever change you make to one will affect both sides. Okay, and you can see how that's, that's sort of working. I prefer the asymmetric. It really does depend on, on your preference. But So you want to center your head, and then you want to say, all right, so how far do I want to go here? And I'm going to click on this dot right here. You can see it turns into the cross. I'm going to grab it. I'm holding that left click. I'm pulling it back. And I'm going to extend it out a bit. So it's going to require more motion for me to get from point A to point B. And see, this is why I do the asymmetric. I'll grab this guy. I'm going to pull it down and sort of just equalize it for now. But now we can start adjusting without driving ourselves crazy. So if I turn my head here, and you can see this is where the head is tracking. So this is about our max. So now it's about, well, how, high, how far do I want to be able to go as I turn my head to the furthest position? All right, so I'm going to grab this guy, and I'm going to start picking it up. And if I move the hand to the left, we're going to increase it even more. So that's, that's probably pretty good right there. I don't want to go much further than that. Okay, and that way, you can see what I'm getting here. So let's do the same thing with the left side. I'm going to first click it and just grab it. How far do I want to go back when I turn my head all the way over? I'm literally borderline, well, there's no borderline about it. I'm uncomfortable right now turning back this far. Okay, so right about there. So now, and you can see I actually went a little further than what I need to. So at this point, uh, I'm going to grab this and pull it to the right a little bit. Try to keep that realistic head movement there. But, I mean, you can make it pretty pretty insane. 
Okay, so there. Now we've got our... I'm pretty content with this. This is it's a good smooth motion. If I just look to the cockpit here, you know, it's pretty decent. If I need to quickly look out my left window, you can do that comfortably. Okay, so there. We've got our yaw. So now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go to pitch. Now, you can see this has got sort of a weird curve already. So, and this might have been me, actually. So what I'm going to do here is I don't like this dot right here. So I'm going to highlight over it till it turns across. I'm going to right-click it. Boom. Now that guy's gotten rid of. Okay. So now we're just working with the basics. So next what we can do is we're going to go to yaw or, um, excuse me, go back to our options screen over here. And we're going to find our pitch and we're going to re-enable it. And so we're just going to sit here and call it pitch. Okay. So now we're starting again here. And again, it's going to be one of those situations where how much do we really want to get? Okay, so it doesn't like that. I'm going too high. And that's the other thing you watch. If you watch your camera tracking, you don't want to push your boundaries because then your camera will start doing some really goofy crap. So again, when you pick your head up, I mean, you don't want to be staring down your nose, right? But what you can do is sort of come down here. That way it's not too crazy. I mean, if I really need to look up, I can go up. And what I'll do is go to about to the max. Right about there. I mean, that's that's in the ceiling, you know? And then same thing with the down angle. Okay, how far down do I want to go? You can see it's starting to get goofy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this down. I'm going to bring it over a little bit further. I want to be able to see my my fuel pumps there, right? You can see what's happening. See that how it's making that one circle here? We don't want that. Okay, that's a problem. So what I can do here, and this is how you catch these kind of things, is we're going to come back over here, and we're going to adjust this. There, and now we got our tracking back, you see? So watch for those kind of things, but now we've lost it up here. See what happened? So this is why I say, honestly, I typically just use this. And I don't usually have any problems. It's tracking it just fine. Now that's, again, I'm reaching the limits. Those two are almost in line is why it's doing that. Okay, so, I mean, this is why you sort of have to, you have to balance out what you're doing with it. And this requires some fiddling around with it. You do. So I'm not going to spend too much time on this. This is going to be preference, going to be what's comfortable for you guys. How far you're willing to to push it. Right about there is about the best I want to do. And so now, you can see we're getting pretty decent vertical and horizontal tracking. All right, so now let's go ahead and go back to our options. And let's enable our roll. And roll is exactly what it sounds like. It's going to be us turning our heads or rotating your head, you know. So let's go to roll here. And so right now it's set to nothing. It's not doing a thing. But if you want it to, sort of set it like that. All right. Again, I'm going to go to asymmetric here. Like, I'm not sure what's happening here. Huh. It's not even picking up as a track on that side, which is interesting for the roll. Oh, it's on the right side. I see. Okay. So this is left side. So I'm going real extreme, kicking my head at a really odd angle, like I'm practically laying it on my shoulder. Okay, rolling to the right. And again, that's just going to give you a bit more natural camera movement as you're moving around the cockpit. All right, so next, let's go ahead and move to the next one. Now, I got to be honest. Usually, honestly, I don't use the roll. Um, it's just not something that I particularly usually care about. Um, so <laughs> I'm sure it'll take the last couple days and then I'll turn it off. Um, let's see here. Let's go to options. And now we're going to check out our x-axis. And this is what I was talking about. So boom. 
sliding from left to right, left to right, and it can get pretty pretty extreme. So again, I'm gonna go as far over as I'm willing to go here. And again, trying to keep it within reason. I mean, you know, it's good to be able to lean. Oops, I didn't want to click that. And anytime you make a dot, you don't mean to. All right, so that's that's probably that's probably about the best you'd get, right? I mean, here I'm in sitting in the cockpit. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and leave that as is. Now let's do the same thing with our Y axis. Let me just come over here. Enable it to Y. And now this one does come in handy. So what I'm going to do here is again get yourself in a nice centered position. Okay. And then as you pick your head up, you don't want to go too crazy. Okay, and actually here we can do this. So coming down, honestly, you f you find that. Oops, I just created a dot. And I didn't mean to. You know, you'll have more need for that. So now, if I need to come down, I can look down, come back up, and look up, and really go up. I mean, if you stand up, your head will pop out of the cockpit. So. And then finally, the last one we need to worry about is our Z or Z axis. And that's going to be our forward and back motion. So let's go looking at, if we wanted to go forward here. Oh, okay, so this one's backwards. Alright, so there's forward. How forward do you want to go, right? I mean, again, you can grab it and find your face planting in the dash. And you can, but just adjust it accordingly, right? I mean, if this is where you're going to be, you want to keep that smooth. Now, I do recommend sort of being cautious with going backwards, okay? Sort of picture it as the seat here. Like, I can tell we're already through the seat, so you probably want to go... Pull it back a little bit more. And that way, you're not too too crazy, right? And you can still move around and, and not feel like a dork. But the nice thing is, like, you know, looking down, you know, you can turn, rotate. And that's pretty much it. So this part really is based on setting up you guys' uh, comfort. Um, I hope you guys have enjoyed this. I know it wasn't perfect. Um, I'm, I'm not the best at these kind of videos yet. Uh, this is my first attempt at doing something like this. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Leave me your feedback below. Obviously I'm here for questions. Um, I've helped plenty of people for, with their VR setups by email. I'm still working with some others. Um, so guys just know that I am here to help, you know, that this is, this is why I created my channel. Um, and this is something that I thought was fairly affordable. Now at the time of making this video, I did look at PS3 i cameras on Amazon. And right now they're a little ridiculous. I mean, I picked mine up for like six bucks and I'm seeing them on Amazon right now for like 35 or 40. Um, so that may change some things, um, but it's still a much cheaper solution than, um, you know, track IR. Track IR is $150 right now. Um, so, you know, by the time shipping taxes, et cetera, you're looking at 170 plus. And not to say track IR isn't great. It's absolutely phenomenal. It's just, it's expensive. So anyway, guys, um, like I said, that wraps this one up. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, leave them down below. Be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Hit that bell for notification of future content. And I will see you guys in the next one. Take care, guys.